We're here in New York City in our Healthy O360 studio, and I'm joined this afternoon with Corbis Pharmaceuticals CEO, uh, Yuval Cohen. Yuval, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, David, for having me. So we were both out in San Francisco last week at the J.P. Morgan uh, Healthcare Conference. I'm assuming that was a productive meeting for you? Very productive. Thank you. So uh, Corbis is an interesting company. You're a clinical stage uh, development company targeting rare disease, uh, specifically around inflammatory disease, um, with no clear met needs in the market today. So tell us a little bit about your company and what you're working on. Certainly. So our vision and our passion at Corbis is to look at a family of diseases which are rare. They typically affect only in the tens of thousands of patients every year. Uh, these are diseases that involve the immune system of these patients being chronically active. And so the immune system becomes uh, a very damaging aspect of their, of their lives. These diseases have a very, very serious morbidity. Uh, the effect of, this, of these diseases is very, very considerable to the quality of life and the health of the patients. And sadly, many of these diseases are either life-threatening or even terminal. What is common to these diseases is that there is typically either no therapy approved specifically for those diseases, or these conditions do not have therapy that deals with the inflammatory aspect of them. They may have other medication that deals with other symptoms or aspects of the indication, but not for inflammation. And so the need could not be greater uh, and the stakes could not be higher. So when we talk about these many call them rare diseases or rare conditions, mm -hmm. um, are they usually diagnosed at a later stage, unlike maybe say diabetes, which, um, you know, is a, a large condition, it's a large disease, there's many people out there that are living with diabetes or are pre-diabetic. Um, are the orphan conditions diagnosed at an early stage or is it uh, a little over the board? It really does matter. So let's take two of the indications that we focus on. We're already in phase two. Uh, cystic fibrosis is one of them. It's a childhood genetic disease. The diagnosis is made either genetically at birth or shortly thereafter because the symptoms become very apparent. Another indication that we focus on is systemic sclerosis, colloquially known as scleroderma. That's a disease that typically doesn't manifest until the patient is in his or her 40s and sometimes 50s. Uh, and even then, it takes a while for those symptoms to reach a uh, sufficient level to uh, merit correct diagnosis. So it does matter a great deal. So let's take them one at a time, for example, cystic fibrosis. Um, so there are about 30,000 Americans diagnosed with cystic fibrosis, about 70,000 plus uh, worldwide. I, I can't understand, you know, I mean, you're working on some great things here. You're going to get a great product to market. Why haven't we seen a product come to market prior to what you're working on? So in the case of cystic fibrosis, as you mentioned, it's a very, very devastating disease. Uh, there are uh, a number of products that have been approved for cystic fibrosis but we have to distinguish between different aspects of the disease. For example, patients are very excited, as are we in the medical community, about the recent products approved from Vertex Pharmaceuticals. These are drugs such as Kaleidico and Orcombi that try and restore some functionality to the defective protein in this disease. There are other medications out there specific for cystic fibrosis that deal, for example, with the infectious, the bacterial infections that characterize this disease. But what's lacking is or are medications that deal with the inflammatory component. These patients are born with a very active and very destructive immune system that over the course of their uh, two short lives uh, causes more and more damage to the patient, serious morbidity, uh, and sadly is usually also the cause of the demise of the patient eventually. Uh, and for that, we do not have any specific drugs available for cystic fibrosis. Okay. So your systemic sclerosis, mm -hmm. um, I was intrigued when I was doing a little bit of research that 80% of those that are diagnosed are women. Um, so, and again, I, I have to ask, you know, what's the story with this condition? I and mean, why haven't we seen something come to market prior to what you're working on? Systemic sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. Uh, it's a very uh, rare autoimmune disease, as you've mentioned yourself, fewer than 100,000 patients in the U.S. Uh, it is not uncommon for the 
rheumatic diseases or the autoimmune diseases to have a um, majority of women affected versus men. Uh, we do not know the medical reason for that, um, but it's, it's a, a fairly steady, constant uh, characteristic of those diseases. Um, it is a devastating disease. It's a disease that strikes uh, patients in typically their 40s, and the average patient would be a 40 or 50-year-old mother who has, with no advance warning, been diagnosed with this very, very serious condition. Uh, the disease affects many aspects of their body and, of course, uh, has a very, very serious repercussions on their personal life, their family life, uh, their professional life. It is a degenerative disease. It tends to get worse and worse as the years go by, uh, and it can be associated with very high mortality levels. Depending on the demographic, depending on the specific uh, diagnosis, uh, sometimes as many as 70% of, of um, diagnosed patients will not live to see the first decade into the disease. And so the need is, is tremendous. You can juxtapose that or contrast that with the fact that to date there has never been a drug specifically approved for systemic sclerosis. Uh, it's a complex disease. It involves the immune system. It involves something called fibrosis, which is the scarring that is a result of that immune damage. So it's a very difficult challenge, uh, but it's a challenge that we embrace and we believe that with our phase two drug in this indication, Resunab, um, we have a, an unusual chance at, at success. Of course, we will find out more as the drug is developed more and more in the clinic. So, and, and the last one you're working on is something called derma, dermatomyotosis? Dermatomyositis. There you go, dermato, sure. dermato, <laughs> dermatomyositis. Um, the diagnosis appears in children between the ages of five and 15 years and in adults between the ages of 40 and 60 years, and the cause is unknown. Correct, so dermatomyositis is another one of those rare uh, autoimmune diseases. It shares some characteristics, characteristics with systemic sclerosis. Again, a preponderance of the patients are female, uh, but as you mentioned yourself, uh, the age distribution can be different. Um, again, chronic inflammation, degenerative disease, um, appearance of scarring or fibrosis in different tissues, uh, dermatomyositis, uh, the muscles are often involved in the disease. Uh, and just like systemic sclerosis, um, sadly to date, uh, there is no drug specifically approved for that indication. Um, again, a tremendous unmet need, uh, and these are really patients that face uh, just incredible challenges in their everyday life. Yeah. Now, Yuval, I know that the FDA uh, is working with um, drug companies. Uh, I've noticed it quite a bit in the area of oncology. Um, where the FDA is fast-tracking the approval of many of these products, given there's a significant need to, you know, save lives and, and improve uh, outcomes. And are you able to take advantage of some of those fast-track programs? Because, you know, from what I'm understanding and the conditions that you're working on, um, there's this huge unmet need, and we've got to get these products to market. Are, are you able to work with the FDA to fast-track some of this? So in 2015, uh, we had a very uh, eventful year, very uh, filled with multiple milestones. Um, some of them were the launch of our three separate phase two studies in cystic fibrosis, systemic sclerosis, and dermatomyositis. But another very important set of milestones were that we were granted by the FDA both orphan designation and fast-track status for cystic fibrosis and systemic sclerosis. That certainly um, will make the development process more efficient. Uh, it makes the dialogue with the FDA uh, more uh, effective, more um, uh, faster, uh, and we certainly are very grateful to the agency for having granted us those two. But I think it's important for our members to understand that when we say fast-tracking, mm -hmm and getting these products to market faster. That doesn't necessarily, it doesn't at all mean that we're ensuring that the efficacy and safety of these products when they come to market is fast-tracked. We're, we're really putting an emphasis on efficacy and safety profile. It's just how the time it takes for the FDA to re review data and approve is what we're speaking of here. That's, That's exactly, exactly right. So, so the clinical trials themselves remain exactly the same. As you mentioned yourself, the FDA is concerned primarily with safety, and then after that, the second most important thing is obviously demonstrating a, a medical benefit for the drug. 
uh, but it's the sort of the spaces in between that are shortened, that are made more effective. Um, and there are also some advantages post-approval uh, that are worthwhile, especially uh, for companies such as ourselves, where any sort of um, increase in the efficacy also translates typically to a reduction in the costs of development. And so it's tremendously important. Well, Yuval, I greatly admire the work that you're doing. And on behalf of Healthio 360, myself and our entire community, I want to thank Corbus Pharmaceuticals for looking into this and really working hard to bring new therapies to market to save lives. David, thank you so much. And please extend our thanks to uh, your um, patients and the audience. As I said, we are passionate about what we do. Uh, and this type of connection with people who ultimately are obviously the reasons for what we, what we do uh, is tremendously beneficial. So thank you so much. Thank you.